All right, so the great debate. Should you buy a gasoline three-quarter ton truck or a diesel three-quarter ton truck? Well, in this video, I'm going to break it down, diesel versus gas. I might do some 150 versus 250, 350, because they're 250, they're the same truck. Let's be honest. The only difference between 250 and 350 is um, one leaf spring in the back. That's it. Uh, come at me, because <laughs> I've seen it. And um, I'm just tired of people saying that you can't, why would you buy a three-quarter ton gasoline truck? Well, there's more reasons and there's more pros than there is cons. Like this truck being a 2013 two-wheel drive, 6.2 gas V8. This particular truck, if you were to buy this truck with a diesel engine, everything else stays the same except for the master cylinder because diesel engines don't make their own vacuum. This wouldn't be... Um, they wouldn't have a vacuum advance boost. It would have an electronic boost thing. But the brakes are exactly the same on the diesel and the gas engine. The brake pads, the rotors, um, everything. The transmission, the suspension, everything is the same. The only difference is, is you get the diesel engine. Okay? Which makes it tow a lot more. The towing on it uh, goes up significant. I think on these year trucks and on some of the newer Fords, they go up, I think, by 10 to 15,000 pounds, depending on what engine, what uh, rear end upgrade you got and everything. But a gasoline engine is, yeah, gasoline's a lot cheaper. So you're saving money there. Okay. You're also saving money on your maintenance because your oil changes are cheaper. You don't have to change oil filters as much often as you do on a diesel. So the maintenance cost is a lot less. And then there's when there's a thing called, you know, it's a, it's a piece of machinery, let's be honest. Something's always going to break on this. You know, it doesn't matter if it's a Ford, Chevy, or a Dodge. It doesn't matter. Something's always going to break on them. But a gasoline engine is a lot easier. The parts are cheaper, and you can easier to find somebody who can work on it. Like this is a 6.2 gas V8. You know, Ford really just got rid of this, and this engine's been around for 10, 11 years, and it's been fairly bulletproof. There's a couple little issues with um, valve uh, valve springs breaking, but that was only on a select few engines. And, you know, there's guys with, you know, five, 600,000 miles on them that haven't had that problem. So gasoline engines are just easier to fix. They're cheaper. You know, if, if you go to the dealership, there's, you know, two different prices on, on labor. Diesel, why do you think diesel, diesel labor prices are more expensive? Because you need a special technician to work on them. And parts for the diesel engine are way more expensive. It's just the nature of the beast. So if you don't need to tow 20,000 pounds and your camper, like this, this is 6,000 pounds. If that was a 12,000 pound camper, gooseneck, I might want to go diesel. But now here's the flip side. This truck has a higher payload capacity because the diesel engine is about 500 pounds heavier. So instead of this truck having 3,200 pounds payload, it has, uh, this truck has 32, uh, no, the 3,300 pound payload. But if it was a diesel, same configuration, two wheel drive, it'd be 500 pounds less payload that you could put in the bed or in the car or, or in the cargo capacity. So if this truck, if this truck was four-wheel drive, that would add 350 pounds. If this truck was a higher trim level, it would add about 100 to 150 pounds. If this truck was an extended cab with the still the six and a half foot bed, this truck would be 200 pounds heavier. So if you got if you got the same truck configured in a King Ranch with all the fancy bells and whistles, four-wheel drive, diesel engine, what do you think the payload would be? It would be about 2,100 pounds in one of these trucks. So you lose so much payload. You're, you're, this truck here has a 2,000 pound of 1,900, I think it's 1,990 something pounds payload. And this is just a two wheel drive 150, no payload package, nothing. You can get these up to 3,200 pounds, almost what this is, if you get the 150 in the heavy duty payload package and towing package. This only has the towing package, not the payload package. Okay, so, and then on top of that, not only did you lose payload, but you gained in towing. But here's the other thing. In 2013, all right, don't quote me on this, but I know it's around that price. If you got the diesel engine, it's $8,000 option. But Mike, uh, you know, uh, the diesel engines get better gas mileage. 
Mm, not really. Not eight thousand dollars more. It would take you. You have to drive the truck for three hundred something thousand plus miles to even break even, and then you got to add maintenance costs and everything else on top of that. And you know, diesel engines are very expensive. Very expensive. I owned one. The injection pump went. Dealer was going to charge me six thousand dollars for parts and injectors. I ended up trading in and buying the last uh, four truck I had, which went to three hundred and. 340, 350,000 ish miles and had over 11,000 hours on it, running hours. And no, not so much as just a starter, an alternator. No, I, I didn't even change the alternator in that. It had a, no, I did. A starter, an alternator, um, serpentine belt pulley, and some plugs. That was it. And that was a 543 valve, which is a terrible motor. No cam phasers, nothing like that. No transmission issues, nothing. So, you know, you guys that are, you know, so sold on these diesel engines, you know, I'm, I'm not. And then you get these other guys, oh, well, you know, if you delete it, well, so you got to buy a truck and then spend thousands of dollars to take a bunch of crap off, emissions crap. See, diesel engines were decent, they just didn't make a lot of power. They started making power and they put the, the pollution crap on them, which all you guys know, that pollution crap always goes wrong. The, 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 the EGRs and all that, it's not worth it. If you have to spend a couple thousand dollars to take a bunch of stuff off the truck when it came factory, is that is that a better engine setup? Oh, but when you delete it, it, it it's so much better. It gets better mileage and this and that. Okay, well, I live in Pennsylvania. Look, Pennsylvania, middle of the sticks. We don't have emission standards here. Go over two counties. If you don't have that emissions control stuff, you can't get your truck inspected. And don't let a DOT catch you towing a trailer or anything like that. It's uh, $10,000 fine. They impound your truck, and they make you put it back to stock. You heard that correctly. That means you have to put the pollution control system back on, the, the, the DPF filter and all that. So modern diesels... No, and don't get caught. And the guy's like, "Oh, I run, I run the cherry flavored diesel." Don't get caught doing that. That they'll really get into you on that one. You know, the, all these farm boys and stuff. Oh, I run my daddy's, uh, uh, you know, off road diesel. I just go to the pump and just. Do, 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 do. Yeah, well, get caught and see what happens. They've been busting people more and more for this because of that. You know. Diesel engines have their place. If you're going to tow a trailer or if you're doing a gooseneck towing, you know, if you're doing hot shot, diesel's the way to go. I'll be 100% right on it, but your maintenance is going to be the deciding factor. Like this truck can only tow 14,500 pounds. This truck can tow 9,500 pounds. A diesel engine, same configuration as this, can tow, I think, eight uh, or 19 or 20,000. But three quarter ton trucks. Okay, with the gooseneck trailer are freaking useless because, like I said, if you get this truck with the diesel and a four wheel drive, everybody gets four wheel drive. Don't 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 use my two wheel drive truck as an example. Everybody gets the four wheel drive trucks, and the four wheel drive trucks give you an, another added disadvantage. One, they turn like crap. One, death wobble. Don't say, oh, my truck doesn't death wobble. They all death wobble at one point in time. Once they start getting the front end starts getting worn out, and if you live in Pennsylvania and you live in a very crappy place. Now the other thing, you know, look at my tires, 10,000 miles. Let's see a diesel guy with a straight axle do that. No chop, no chop whatsoever. And you guys know what I'm talking about because I've owned them. And they chew front tires up. They ride like crap. They ride worse than a two-wheel drive. The turning radius is horrendous. You guys should know. And this is a rant video on, on two-wheel drive and everything. I'm just tired of you guys. I picked these trucks. I've owned, I've owned like 15 different trucks. And I've worked for companies that owned all different trucks. And I've been around them. I've fixed them. I've worked them. I've wrenched them. I've put millions of miles on trucks, you know, with companies and everything. And I own my own business now doing scrap metal. This is a work truck. This isn't a play toy. This doesn't get daily driven to my job, you know, um, at Lowe's where I'm a manager or some crap. Like you guys, you guys, these, these are work tools. These are work trucks. Everybody wants to drive a heavy duty truck. Why? Tires are more expensive. Brakes. The, the maintenance cost on these things is horrendous. Even a 150, they're getting bad. Like, even this truck, thing parts are so expensive and everything. Why would you drive a, a, a pickup truck? Now, I'm a firm believer that every house needs a pickup truck. But you guys, you know, you buy four-wheel drive and you don't even engage it once or twice a year. Maybe when it snows a little bit. You know, I, I just do the next best thing. I buy tires for my truck. Like, yeah. It's called put tires on your truck. And if it's really that bad, you don't go anywhere. I mean, four-wheel drive has its place. But you, you, as soon as you start putting all this stuff on truck, it loses its capacity. 
and it, it just it it if you're not snow plowing, why do you need four wheel drive? Half of you guys in the, the lower part of the states don't even need four wheel drive. Not you Canada boys. Canada boys, if you don't buy four wheel drive, you're just dumb. I mean that's completely different. They they have snowfall all the time and their roads are always muddy and they go through a, a free saw period. You you Canada guys, I I'm I feel you. I've never been to Canada, but I, I know the struggles. But this truck towing a fifth wheel camper, you have two thousand pounds of capacity. That's it. So if you got a fifth wheel camper, some of those campers have twenty five, twenty six hundred pounds um tongue weight onto the back. You, you couldn't even you wouldn't even be able to drive that legally. And it would be squatting to the absolute moon. You shouldn't tow a fifth wheel. My my beat bed. But you shouldn't be able you shouldn't tow a fifth wheel camper. Okay? Unless you have at least a one ton dual wheel. There is no way. Because a one ton if this truck was a um a 350 dual wheel dual axle truck even in two wheel drive it would have the highest payload capacity the only thing that would be better is if it was a regular cab like this truck this cab configuration would be the lightest in the 250s or 350s but in this year trucks if this was a 350 dual wheel you following me guys dual wheel even with the 355 gears its towing capacity would be about the same and it would be a little bit heavier because it's got the dual wheel and everything, but its payload would be almost five or six thousand pounds. You see what I'm saying? Five or six thousand pounds. And you know what changes when you get the dual wheel truck? The wheels change. You get bud wheels. The tires might be a different size, but they're still the same load range. They're not a heavier load range. They're not 12 plies. They're still 10 plies. And you get an extra tire on the back. And you'll have an you have an you'll have where this truck has. This truck only has three leaf springs with no overload helper. You could see the bolts, the holes for it. Right here would be an overload helper. There would be a pack here. It would sit on top. And so the 350 would add one more spring to this, and four-wheel drive adds the helper pack, which if any of you guys know, by the time you load that and it touches, the truck is squatting to the moon. It's like two, three inches down. So if you got a 350 dual wheel, you'd have two more leaf springs here, and you'd have that overload pack on top with like three or four springs, something like that. That's the only difference. But your brakes, your drums, your your your, your master cylinder, all that stuff stays the same. So these trucks are just overbuilt. A 250 is is overbuilt. If they, if they could do the the, if a 350 with the same braking setup, same frame, their frame is not thicker. Don't don't I don't want to hear it. The frame is not thicker. It is not on a 250, 350. It might be different on a cabin chassis truck or something like that, or a 4500 and up. But I think a 4500 is the same frame. It says double strapped on the bottom underneath the cab in the cradle. They're double strapped. But I think they're the same frame uh, thickness. Is the tensile strength on the on the steel thicker or a stronger? I don't know. You'd have to ask a Ford engineer that. It probably is. These these, these uh, frames probably have different tensile strengths, and they use better steel to get them to, um, you know, have a higher payload or something. But most of the truck, most two fifties, three fifties are all the same thing. There's nothing different. And these, the diesel engines in my in my book, you know, if you buy a diesel engine and you don't tow anything with it, or you have a camper that's underneath, you know, ten thousand pounds. You're just wasting your money, man. When that thing breaks and you know it's going to break, oh, but I got 200,000 miles. Man, when your injection pump goes or, or, or you need injectors and it costs you four grand, don't come crying to me. Because this truck's got 208,000. I changed the plugs on it. That's it. Original starter, original alternator. I just changed the front brakes on this for the second time at 190, like 198,000 was the second time I put rotors on it front and rear. I get 100,000 miles out of a set of rotors with towing and hauling, towing that camper, towing this big trailer back here full of scrap metal. If you want to look at some of my videos and see this big trailer back here, 24 foot trailer right here, full of scrap metal, eight, 9,000 pounds, truck tows it like it's not even there, doesn't even recognize it. And I know this video got kind of on a rant here, but... This guy, this, this truck's a, you know, you guys that know this truck, this truck's a five liter Coyote. This truck tows that camper like it's not there. This truck towing 9,000 pounds is a little, you know, it's there. It's five, 6,000 pounds all day long, nothing. And this is 355 gear. That's 373 gear. I misspoke. But pickup trucks are work tools. You want to drive one all the time regular? Then you know what you do? You get 
the, the base six cylinder and that's it. It'll get five or six miles per gallon better than this on the highway. You'll still have four wheel drive. It'll be a nice, comfortable truck. They give you all these options because they want people to spend more money on these things. A base model truck like this was probably about 26,000. Now a base model truck, the same thing, non four wheel drive is probably about 35, 40,000 ish. A base model truck on this in 2013. This isn't a base model truck. It's got a couple options, but I have the window sticker. I think it was like 39,000. I went and priced the same truck. Yeah, it's, it's 55,000. So, and if you added a diesel, it would be 65,000. So $65,000 and actually 8,000 on these. Some of the newer ones are 10, 12,000 for the, the, the diesel upgrade. It's just not worth it in my book. If you're not towing and you guys are daily driving these things with these diesel engines, I, I, I don't, I don't know what to tell you, man. I really don't. 95% of the people who buy a Super Duty truck don't even use it. Though I need four-wheel drives to go off-road, and, and you don't go off-road. They, they drive on a dirt road like this. I'm just, this is a rant video, and I'll tell you what. Prove me wrong in the comments. Prove me wrong, and I bet you nobody will. And it don't matter if it's a Ford, Chevy, or a Dodge. It, it does not matter. All They all have their problems, and I like Ford's gas engines because I don't have any problems. I've owned... Like I said, a bunch of trucks. I've plowed with uh, Ford 250s, diesels, gas. I even plowed with a two-wheel drive truck. We used to plow a big open uh, parking lot. And I just have chains on the back, and I would plow with a two-wheel drive truck like this. It was a 2006. And I never even spun the back wheels on it. So, and that, well, it had a locking differential. So, but all right. That was my rant video, and I don't care. Prove me wrong in the comments. I, I don't care. You're not going to sell me on it. If, if I was towing heavier than, than 20,000 pounds, I would. And this, this truck behind me, I've towed over, over its weight about 12,000 and it was fine. And this truck, I towed a boat for somebody that was 20,000 pounds overweight. I pulled it out of the boat slip with two wheel drive and delivered it to his house four or five miles. And it was extremely heavy. It had two Cummings diesel engines in it. The guy afterwards told me it was over 20,000. He didn't know. He couldn't tow it because his Dodge, the transmission went big shocker probably from towing that beast around but all right this is my rant video on diesel versus gasoline and if you like these videos and you want to see some of my towing videos and um some of my scrapping adventures remember to hit that uh comment or the like button and comment and uh subscribe we'll be doing more things like this and I'm trying to get more trucks together so we could do some towing off some tow off videos and stuff but it's hard being a small youtuber and you have a full-time you know business and everything but um all right i'll see you guys in the next video